so we have a scenario on the board. A gentleman, husband and wife, couple, recently became a client. No, they've been a client since 2019. And uh, they finally have been taking action lately during this uh, outbreak. So the question is, Velocity Banking, does it work in a crisis? Let, let's put it to the test. It's May 1st, 2020. Income on the board is 7400 a month combined, husband and wife. Expenses are 5988 My total debt is $184,954.16. For those of you who are watching live, you are in for a treat, my friend. Okay? Especially the ones that have been sticking with me for a while. Cash flow is $1,412 a month. Based on these four major numbers, these are conservative numbers. Conservative income, conservative cash flow, okay? And overestimating on expenses. So whatever I display here is going to be an underperforming result compared to what he will actually do. We have a debt tool, which is a credit card for anyone located in New York, okay? This gentleman is located in Buffalo, New York, and there is a credit union called Cornerstone, I believe. Cornerstone something. In short, FCU. You can type that in for my New Yorkers, okay, that are looking for a great credit union. This is something that is new information to Denzel Rodriguez. So if it's new to me, it's most likely going to be new to you, okay? So we have a credit card. Listen to me, debt tool credit card with a credit union credit union for 15,000 is the credit limit the interest rate is 8.99% on cash advances and 7.99% on purchases this also comes with cash back rewards in addition to this credit card he has the ability to take cash out of this credit card via a cash advance. Now, normally most credit cards that I have, all of my credit cards that I have, have cash advance fees. Usually there's a initial cash advance fee and usually the interest rate spikes compared to the normal rate. For this gentleman, because he has excellent credit, a banking relationship, a long-standing relationship for over a decade, I believe, with this specific bank, they have a very special platinum credit card for their special credit members. He does not have any cash advance fee whatsoever on this credit card, number one. So no cash advance fee. Number two, I can do unlimited cash advance withdrawals in any given month. Point number two. Point number three, I can take a cash advance up to the credit limit of $15,000 without any cash advance fee. The only thing I have is the 8.99%. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have a proper debt tool here that functions just like a HELOC and just like a line of credit. So what this means is that we have a credit card here that if used properly, I can use it to pay all of my bills instead of a portion of my bills. This is phenomenal information. Usually when I make videos, I caution people with credit cards. I say, hey, credit cards, you can only use them for bills that can be paid with a credit card, okay? But that statement still holds true, okay? So if I was to swipe the card to pay my car payment with this card, I would probably incur a fee from the debtor right? The, the, the lender, right? They might charge a fee, the mortgage company, the, the whomever, they may have their fee for using a credit card. But see, with this gentleman, we have the ability to strip credit, put it into cash 
into a checking account, right? So let's draw this out. I got a credit card, right? And I got my checking account. So what he's able to do is strip credit, turn it into cash, and then pay his bills, right? Then I can use the credit card to swipe to pay for bills that can be paid with a credit card, and that is only gonna be charged at 7.99%, so an interest rate lower, plus cash back, okay? So very, very clear, we're, sh we're turning credit into cash, cash pays bills like mortgage payment, other credit card bills, other debts. The rest of the credit card just gets swiped, groceries, food, subscriptions, cable, internet, Wi-Fi, pa, 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 right? That's off to the side. So very, very awesome details here. Now, let's go to the debts. I've got three other credit cards that have balances on them. Currently, this credit card, our debt tool, zero balance. So the other three credit cards, $530.21, the monthly payment, $143, it's at 0%. So all three of these credit cards are at 0%. $3,222.44. The payment's 141, 0%. The other one, 155, 31, monthly payment, 51 bucks, 0%. He has it structured where by the time these credit cards expire, it'll be paid off on its own. So we're gonna ignore paying that. Moving down the line, I got a mortgage. I owe $153,000 on, 153,111 and 17 cents. The monthly payment, is $1,599.21. The interest rate is 3.75%. In addition to my first mortgage, I have a second position he loan. I have a home equity loan, not a home equity line of credit. So I have a he loan, okay? And I owe $25,935.03. The monthly payments 207.32 the interest rate is 3.25%, okay? I have a little over 12 years left. So to be exact, I got about like, like 150, 153, 154 payments of 207.32. So if you take 207.32, you times it by 153 payments, you're gonna get somewhere around $31,700 and some change. So what that means, is if I do nothing and continue to pay 207.32 a month, I am looking at interest of $5,764.97, about. It's not totally accurate, but it's about accurate. Pretty close. So we got this interest on this HELOC. We're in a crisis. We're in a lockdown. It's 2020, COVID outbreak, yada, yada. I'm gonna do velocity banking, okay? Our chunk is going to be $10,000 from the 15K. Why is that? 66% of the line of credit is $9,900. So I went 100 bucks higher and just round it up, call it 10K. The 10K chunk, where's that money going? It's coming out of the credit card into cash. The cash, the 10K, is gonna pay a bill. What am I gonna pay? I'm gonna pay the HELOC first because these three debts are on 0%. It would not make sense to tackle my mortgage right now. This IRS bill is not due till 7-15-2020, so I'm not gonna pay attention to it right now. He doesn't even have the bill yet, okay? So he doesn't have like a monthly payment or anything like that. So we're not worried about it. The most concerning thing is this HELOC. That's the thing I want to kill first because eventually I want to transition into a HELOC, okay, at a much lower rate than 8.99. I could probably get a super low rate, especially in the low interest rate environment that we are in currently, right? So, by the way, this person prior to meeting me got a home equity loan. So prior to knowing Velocity Banking, if he knew Velocity Banking, he would not have done this, okay? So this happens to people. You don't know what you don't know. Okay, so we got a home equity loan instead of a line. That's okay. We're gonna bring it to zero and then we're gonna 
renegotiate, reapply for a home equity line of credit at the same credit union. This Cornerstone Credit Union offers great credit cards, they offer personal line of credit, and they do HELOCs. Okay, so this is an awesome credit union up north for my northerners, okay? Now, by making a principal only payment of $10,000 from a credit card at 8.99%, do the math. 10,000 times 8.99 equals $899. Divided by 365, that's $2.46 a day. What would you rather pay people? $2.46 a day or $5,764.97, right? You can divide that up by the payments, right? And try to get an, uh, an idea of how much he's paying in interest per month. Understand that he is being front-loaded interest on that 207. So 3.25%, if I was to ask you what's more expensive, 3.25% amortized or 8.99% simple interest, most people are going to say 3.25 because they don't understand the difference between amortized simple interest. But for my people in the room here, we don't have that issue. For the people watching live, you understand that 3.25 is in fact more expensive than 8.99 simple. So worst case scenario, 899 divided by 12, the most amount of interest I can possibly pay on this credit card in the first month is $74.91. That's the most. Do the math, right? There it is. My goal is to reduce that to zero. In fact, make money. Hence, we're going to off set my borrowing cost. How do we do that? We're going to take that 10K, we make a chunk, right? And here's what the balance would drop to from 25,935.03 minus 10K principal only payment brings it down to 15,935.03. When I do this, okay, you can run this to an amortization schedule you will save over $3,700 in interest day one. Understand that? So what's remaining is a balance of 15,935.03 and I'll have interest left of 1,983.63. So instead of 12 years, this thing is gonna drop to maybe like half, 50%. We're gonna shave off a lot. So what just happened? I just consolidated debt to the credit card. That's the first step. Now Velocity Banking comes into play. Because I have the ability to do unlimited cash advances, unlimited withdrawals from credit to cash, we can dump all of our income into the credit card. So 10,000, new balance, 8.9%. 8.99, I pay $2.46 in the first 24 hours. Let me ask you a question. Do I pay $2.46 if I saved over $3,700? No. So I offset whatever the cost is over here. I hope you're getting that. Okay? So 10,000 minus $7,400 over a 30-day period. It's May 1st to May 31st, so 30 days, right? And give or take this, this, you know, we've been talking since April, so he might have already made some moves. But nonetheless, income's going in, expenses are coming out, okay? I didn't, I didn't, get, I didn't get a cash flow gain, I just saved a bunch of freaking interest, okay? So income goes in, expenses come out at the end of the month, the balance should be somewhere around $8,588 plus whatever interest between $2.46 and $74.91 in the first month. So obviously if I dump all my income in, I'm not going to pay $74.91 for 30 days, right? So I may have dropped that cost to maybe 50 bucks, right? So that means that the following month will be less then the first month, no matter what, and it'll probably be about 10, 15, maybe $20 less. This is great stuff, man. Ooh, this is powerful. 
So we do velocity banking May, June, July, August, about four months. Okay. Conservatively, the balance would be somewhere around 4,300 and some change owed. In reality, he'll probably have this paid off sooner, right? If not, I'm projecting by August that the latest. So August, September could probably bring that to zero. Now, when I say bring it to zero, what you have to understand is even though I have a running balance on my debt tool, I could have a running balance on a debt tool, but still have it paid off. How? Take a look at the expenses. There comes a point where when you dump income into your debt tool, you're going you're gonna to hit a point where technically you pay it off. So to be at zero, but you still have expenses to pay, bills to pay. So all that means now is you're only going to be taking out what you need. So technically you already paid off the chunk that you did. Now you're just paying your bills. If he's paying his bills through a credit card, majority of those bills aren't even getting charged interest because it takes a cycle period to actually get charged interest. So between August, right? This time period technically he pays off the car, but it'll have a running balance of bills. His bills are 5,988. So in any given month, he should owe 5,988 paid off in full, run it up again, paid off in full, run it up again. When that occurs, that is an indication that I need to make my next chunk towards my next debt, right? So let's be super conservative and say September, maybe October, I do the second chunk, right? The second chunk is going to go towards the same debt. I'm going to hit that again. Now, I might feel very tempted to pay off the whole thing, depending on my four major numbers at that time, if my cash flow went up, because remember, these four major numbers are conservative numbers. His income could go up and his cash flow could go up. So I might be very, very tempted to um, go above my 66% number for the sake of cash flow gains and interest savings. Right? By the time I hit September, October, I'm still making 207, 207, 207 payments. I'm still paying the bill. So the balance will be down maybe around 15K and some change. Right? And I might feel very, very tempted to do a 15K chunk, use the whole credit limit. Or another thing I can do is when I bring the credit card to zero, I call the credit union and I say, increase my credit line, please, $5,000. Thank you. Credit union increases the credit line to $20,000 which increases your chunk capability to 13,200 being 66% of the line of credit if it's 20,000, right? And so I wouldn't mind going up to like 70 or 80% for the sake of wiping the whole thing out. So my second chunk more than likely will pay off the HELOC, right? And I would have saved all this interest over here, paid nothing over here on the credit card, whatever I paid, came from over here, right? It didn't come from anything different. It came right from here, right? And I saved a bunch of money, I get a cash flow gain, I'm happy. My credit score is gonna stay, it's gonna remain strong. I think he's in the 800s. So his credit score is gonna remain very, very strong. It's going to show that his overall VTI has gone down. Once I pay off this home equity loan, what does that do to the equity of my property? I'll have over 30 plus more thousand dollars equity in the property. The third move, after I do that second chunk, let's say it pays off the home equity line of credit. These two cards right here might have been paid off by then, so that means my cash flow goes up $194, right? And I'll just have that remaining on 0%. So these will get wiped off on their own within, 20, within the year 2020. 
this will be gone in by 2020, right? And then I'll just be doing velocity banking for a few months on the credit card, right? So I could probably bring it to zero by say February, February, March, like the latest. When that occurs, um, I forgot to mention this IRS debt. He has another credit card uh, we have a credit card offer with Discover, 0%, 14 months. So what we were thinking about doing for the sake of focusing attention on that HELOC, right, is transferring this IRS bill over to Discover, pay the monthly minimum payment, and be done with it. Wouldn't affect our cash flow because we would be using it from these two cash flow numbers, right? Plus the cash flow is already conservative to begin with. So that helps with a lot. So I'm going to leave that there. So that means IRS is taken care of. I'm not going to worry about them. They're off my back. HELOC's done. The credit card itself will probably be at zero by February, March or sooner, 2021. When I hit this point, zero on the credit card, I am going to consider applying. I would like to get your thoughts on this, guys. I want to get your opinion. Applying for a first position HELOC, okay? Why do I say that? The reason being is because of the low interest rate environment that we're in right now, the potential to shift the whole entire mortgage from 3.75 amortized to simple interest. You have a huge opportunity here. According to the qualifications that I like to see before getting a first position HELOC is take a look at his four major numbers. By the time we wipe out all these other debts, his cash flow is going to be higher. His income is high to begin with. He has a great debt tool, but we could get an even better one. Right With the low interest rate environment that we're in, I could probably get maybe a lower rate of 3% or maybe 2.9 or 2.5% on a first position HELOC. What that would do to the payment itself of fifteen ninety nine twenty one is the actual payment would be less. So that means more cash flow. On top of that, escrow and taxes gets removed. I am now in control of escrow and taxes. So that means more money is sitting in principle in the HELOC, in the first position HELOC. Plus, because it's a first position HELOC, it's basically a checking account. I can dump all my income into the HELOC and have it sit there. So technically every month, I'd be making $7,400 payments to the property, right? So there is a huge potential in 2021 for this gentleman here if he does everything accordingly, right? I can get a lower interest rate, a lower monthly payment, a hell of a more cash flow, and pay off the thing extremely, ex I mean extremely fast, right? And then in regards to the escrow and the taxes, the uh, he, since he's in charge of the payment, he pays at the end of the year or whenever it's due, basically that money is sitting in principle and because it's revolving the first position HELOC, I can pull money out and pay my annual bills. To make this even sweeter, to make it even sweeter, I'm gonna open more credit cards. I'm gonna continue to look for more 0% offers. Maybe I can shift my property taxes, my car insurance, any annual bill that would save me money if I paid it annual, shift it into a credit card, or to avoid any fees whatsoever, maybe I just run bills that can be paid with a credit card, right? So I get a 0% credit card on purchases, and I just run my normal food, groceries, subscriptions, cable, internet, Wi-Fi, phone bill, gas, miscellaneous for a few months, and that's cash flow sitting in the HELOC. When the credit card expires, I pull it out of the HELOC, pay the credit card in full, apply for another credit card, 0%, and do it all over again. 
and that'll get me out of debt extremely fast, extremely fast, okay? So the first position HELOC would be replacing the mortgage, the first position mortgage, okay? So it's the same thing as the second position HELOC, right? It's just, it's smaller, right? The second position HELOC is smaller, right? It's a second lien on the property. The first position HELOC, right, is your new mortgage, right? But it's a big fat line of credit that you have access to, right? So when we go, when we go first position HELOC, he might get a $200,000 line and have whatever's owed in the mortgage get put right into that HELOC. So I'll have all this space and equity and then whatever the balance of the mortgage is in 2021 when I do that move. So that might be something very, very interesting to consider.